What the heck was that whooshing sound? My friends, today we're talking about tape flange and how you can get it with a reel-to-reel -reel like this one. Here we go. Here we are, we gotta ask ourselves, what is tape flange? Any flanging effect is where you take a recorded track, be it vocals or an entire mix, you copy it, you play it against the original signal, and usually with a teeny tiny little bitty delay. We're talking milliseconds here, usually less than 20 or so. Uh, when a layperson hears tape flange or a flanging effect, they usually describe it as a, a whooshing, a swooshing, or a jet engine sort of thing. Or like you're inside of a, a big pipe like Mario and Luigi. Uh, this technique really came into popularity in the 1960s when engineers and musicians were getting way more experimental in the studio. But you can find older examples. Les Paul, rest in peace, had a tune in 1952 called Mammy's Boogie, uh, where he used a similar technique, but not with tape. It was with two disc recorders. Go check out that 1952 tune uh, Mammy's Boogie. You can't talk about flange without bringing up the Beatles. During the recording of Revolver at Abbey Road, the engineer was named Ken Townsend. The Beatles were double tracking vocals all day, as was a common technique back then, still is today. As some of you know, singing to yourself can actually be quite difficult, and it's definitely time consuming. It takes up an entire precious track during those four track days. Mr. Townsend thought there must be an easier way. And being a smarty pants engineer of the truest sense, he figured out a way to get artificial double tracking by using two tape machines. We've got some wonderful weird effects of, of phasing and, and, and flanging. And um, so we played it and John Lennon was most impressed actually. Um, he fell in love with it straight away. Please check out the video link for a real and full explanation directly from his mouth. He is credited as the inventor of artificial double tracking, which leads us to flange. Go on Spotify right now and pull up the song Tomorrow Never Knows from Revolver, recorded on April 6, 1966. Fast forward to about a minute, 25 seconds, and you'll hear the flange come in on Lennon's vocals. I'm not gonna play it here, because the copyright gods will claim this entire video as their own. By the way, this tune slaps hard. My flange is much more DIY and more primitive. Today, we're going to try to put it on a vocal track on this Tascam machine. Here is what the recorded track sounds like with no flange. Ooh, we're testing, uh, testing the flange. As you can hear, there's nothing on it. So, I have a free track, track two. I've already recorded that exact take onto this reel-to-reel. -reel. And what I'm going to do is try to time it as such that I'm going to record it from here to the Tascam, from the reel-to-reel -to, -reel to the Tascam on track two. And, and as I'm doing that, I'm going to uh, slow the reel down physically, speed it up physically, and try to get some interesting sounds. You'll hear it, hopefully it works. Uh, usually this takes several attempts. I'm not gonna show you all of them. So here's the one that I deemed good enough to show the world. Here we go. Ooh, we're testing, uh, testing gonna test it and we're testing it now mm, yeah. so you're testing the flanging is it flanging is it raining is it pouring is it snowing as you can see you get you're definitely getting a little bit of it here uh, it's not as extreme 
and precise as on the Beatles record because we're using we're just using tape. So for an even greater example, I'm gonna head into Logic and show you how you can use this on your entire mix. And and you'll see there are some tools in there that make it a, a little bit easier for us. So check it out. Okay, here we are. Uh, over by the reel to reel and I've got logic up and we're ready to use it as a mechanical flange on the entire mix as opposed to just the one uh, element in a mix. So let's uh, let's try to do it. Let's figure this out. All right, so as you can hear, I transferred the section of music that I want to onto the reel-to-reel, -reel, and I just played it back uh, against the track where I was trying to line it up pretty close. It's really hard to do, but uh, after like 10 times, I got close, but then I'm like, eh, I'm in a DAW, so I nudged uh, this the flange track to the left a little bit. And the goal typically when you're doing this technique is to have a separate track and you fade it in and you fade it out. So I'm going to automate this uh, flange track to come in where I want it and to go out where I want it. So let's hear what it sounds like. Sick. I want to. I want to play it back just for me, just to see if I uh, if I nailed it or or not. Let's. So here we go. Again. Very cool. Uh, back to you, other Made on Tape man. I hope this gives you some ideas. Of course, there are pedals and plugins galore that mimic this effect, but wouldn't you rather do it the hard way? Seriously, though, I always find it very fascinating knowing what effects that we take for granted as young people today. You just pick up a pedal, it says flanger, and you're like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. It's really interesting to learn what mechanical and physical um, methods had to be used to achieve this, these sounds. Uh, every effect that you can think of has some mechanical past to it. And I find that very, very cool, very fascinating. It's fun to learn. It's fun to mess around with. And yeah, I'm a musician. I like to tinker. So with that, as always, please, peace, and be good to each other. Ciao. Ooh, we're testing, uh, testing the flange. Uh -uh. We're gonna test it, and we're testing it now. Testing the flanging. Is it flanging? Is it raining? Is it pouring? Is it snowing? Did it, did it, did it do? Bye!